سنبدا الجلسه الختاميه او ما يسبق الجلسه الختاميه بعرض فيلم وثائقي تم انجازه لغرض هذه الجلسه يستمر خمسة دقائق ومن ثم نقدم الكلمه الرئيسيه الاخيره طلع لبناني لقى شيء بالدواء لمرض الكانسير بس دولته ما ما رحبت فيه راح لبرا بس اذا دولته بتضمه يمكن يصير متطورين اكثر من امريكا انا كنت عم نبش على شيء راح يكون هو الترند من هلا ل 15 سنه لقدام الليد هو لايت اميتنج دايود اوكي يعني المصروف الفولتج الامبير اللي بينعطى لللمبه لتعطي القوه الشاين كثير اخف من الفلوريسون او حتى الجرين سيف لايتنج ايفنشولي اذا كل البلد نقل لهالتكنولوجي هيدا يعني رح يعمل ريدكشن من 40 ل 50% من السي او 2 ايميشن تبعه في بيروت عندنا اول شيء من وراء الحرب ومن وراء العمار شوي كيف ما كان عندك حيطان كلها مكسرة مهدمة حيطان كتير كتير وسخة بالجرافيتي فينا أعمل شغلة أول شيء معبر عن نفسي بطريقة كرياتيف ثاني شيء فينا أعمله هو إنه أقدر جمي المدينة تبعي اللي أنا عايش فيها اعمل لوحه على طول بفكره انه هاي اللوحه لازم تنتشر بكل الكره الارضيه مثل ما عم توصلنا لوحات من الفنانين من برات البلد هيدا بيساعد لانجاح الحضاره لانجاح الثقافه ان كان ببلدنا او بكل الكره الارضيه في عندنا مكتب اون كامبس مؤلف من ثمان اشخاص وظيفته يلاقي شغل للطلاب هن وتلاميذ مش بس يتخرجوا إذا التلميذ ما عنده على السي في تبعيته شيء فرقه عن التلميذ الثاني واللي هي الخبرة رح يكون في عنده صعوبة ليلاقي شغل إذا أنا حاطط على الإبراز شو بدي اللي بدي إياه إذا بركز بالدرس بركز بكل شيء حاطط مهماتي المستقبلة بجيبها بسهولة يعني العالم العربي لفترات طويلة استثمر بمشاريع إنشائية أما الاستثمار بالإنسان هو بعدين بيرجع بيعمل هالمشاريع الإنشائية بين الفيسبوك والتويتر والايفون وصار في كثير بلاتفورمز في واحد بكل سهوله يطلع بافكار يبتكر ويطلع ببرودكتس ويبيعها على سعيد عالمي فنحن بحاجه للعالم يطلعوا بافكار ويطلعوا من بلاد العربيه ان كان بالعربي او بغير عربي مشان تا يخلقوا هالفرص العمل ويستثمروا وما يتوظفوا يخلقوا هن وظائف أكثر من 60% من سكان الوطن العربي أقل من 30 سنة إذا ركزنا على هؤلاء الجيل الشاب في الوطن العربي وهيئناه للمنافسة عالميا فنحن سوف نستطيع أن نأخذ مكان متقدم في العالم مستقبلنا نحن منحدده حسب نحن شو بدنا فالمفروض يكون أهدافنا موحدة نشوف نحن كشباب على القليلة شو بدنا بالوطن العربي نحط حاجاتنا واهدافنا على خط واحد لحتى نشتغل عليه. مستقبل العالم العربي بالنهايه هن صوره لهالشباب. ففي حال كان في اهتمام اكبر بهالشباب وبتنميه هالشباب وكمان هن هالشباب كان عندهم وعي اكبر كمان بدورهم بهالمجتمع اكيد هالمستقبل حيكون افضل. تلاميذ النس البنات يجون يسالوني هل هو يعني كيف وصلتي وين ما انت واصله الحين بالشغل وهل كثير صعب ولا هل تقدرين تعملين انتجتي هل هو سهل لنا احنا انا دائما اقول لهم لازم تشجعون نفسكم ولازم تكونون عندكم ذا بليف ان يور سيلف ويو كان دو ات والثقه بنفسكم وليش لا انا نقيت اتعلم جينيتك انجينيرنج بالجامعه لانه فيها تساعد كثير ناس يلي عندهم سكنسز بالكروموزوم تبعهم بالنسبه للابداع شايف هذه العلبه كل شيء برات هذه العلبه سو so دائما فكري بالطريقه برات العلبه هذا هو الابداع
شكرا يسعدني ان نقدم صاحب الكلمه الرئيسه الاخيره في هذا المؤتمر السيد دانيال ووكر وهو مؤسس مجموعه ووكر المواهب ويملك خبره اكثر من ثلاث عقود ونصف في القياده ووضع استراتيجيات القياده لشركات عالميه منها ومن ابرزها شركه ابل كمبيوترز وهو حاليا يدير مجموعه ووكر تالنت جروب او مجموعه ووكر المواهب فليتفضل دان بليز I've waited for this moment for a long time. Uh, I learned about five months ago that I'd be speaking, and it was a very long five months because I was excited about the opportunity to address this group. So I'm glad it's here, and I hope I can add some value to, to this event. I'm grateful to have the honor of addressing this very distinguished audience. I've been looking forward to the event for months. Before I begin my remarks, though, I'd wish uh, to thank His Royal Highness Prince Khalid Al Faisal, President of the Arab Thought Foundation, for allowing me this small part in this very important event. I also wish to thank the members of the trustee of the trustees of the foundation. I'm not here as an Arab. I'm not here as, a, as an expert on the Arab world, nor do I hold credentials in economic development or education. What I offer is decades of frontline senior executive experience fighting this issue of how to grow human capital. How do we grow the human beings who make all of our enterprises run? Throughout, I've had one clear objective, develop extraordinary talent to drive world-class businesses. And my area of deepest expertise is building new types of human capacity for this rapidly changing world. I'm greatly honored to have been asked to share some insights, lessons, and offer recommendations on this important topic. Before I dive into the core con uh, content of my speech, I want to make something clear. I'm well aware that the Arab world is large and it consists of many nations. There are variances among them in terms of sovereign wealth, natural resources, um, political, social issues, employment conditions, and many other variables. And I ask that you consider my thoughts accordingly. I'd like to begin with my view of human capital issues from a global perspective. The Arab world's challenges in this area, believe it or not, are not unique. Um, I've worked around the world over the past 20 years, uh, Singapore, um, Latin America, um, obviously the United States, Europe, and everybody Every institution, all businesses, are facing serious human capital problems. Much effort and money is spent searching for answers, yet over the past several decades, results have been incremental and largely ineffective. There have been strategic mistakes, but one in particular is worth taking a much closer look. Historically, nations have viewed human capital building from the perspective of the supply side. The supply side is comprised of secondary schools, technical schools, other institutions like those, and universities. Private enterprises and educators rarely work together closely as a team with the same end results in mind. And again, this isn't unique to the Arab world. I've seen it in some of the most, what we would consider to be um, successful nations in terms of their ability to master the human capital issue. Uh, they still haven't resolved this issue. The educators and people in private enterprise simply don't talk enough. So what's the result? Employers are often dissatisfied with the quality and the quantity of talent produced by the supply side. Employer side studies consistently bear this out. The failure of close collaboration has to be corrected. Significantly more emphasis must be placed on the demand side, reflecting the needs of the end users of this human capital to which we refer. Globalization, the shift to knowledge-based workforces, rapidly changing technologies, increasing competition, and many other trends are impacting the skills needed of today's talent. 
The speed and complexity of business is rapidly increasing and will not diminish anytime soon. This is here for the long haul. Um, I expect it, by the way, to become faster and more complex. Um, I'll be speaking to you about my Apple experience later on, uh, which is a, um, it's a tempest in a teapot or a teacup, and um, I think you'll enjoy what we went through, and I'll share it with you. These workforce shifts are changing how people work, how they learn, how they communicate, and how they live. This transformation requires new and higher levels of skills from the workforce. This means much higher demands on the supply side to nourish the demand side with the right kinds and quantities of human capital fuel to drive their economies. At the end of the day, employers want the right people at the right time, in the right place, with high levels of the right general and technical skills. And it sounds like a, like a simple formula, but the difficulty lies in the execution, as everybody here knows. It's wonderful to boil something down to a simple sentence, but to actually execute on that simple sentence sometimes is so daunting that it never happens. Educators and employers must work in concert to execute this very important planning, manufacturing, and supply chain process. It must be conducted like a finely honed symphony. There simply isn't room for error today because the competition regionally, nationally, by industry is just so fierce that a mistake could be so costly as to be destructive. Change brings challenge and opportunities in equal measure. In this 21st century, the success of peoples and nations will depend upon how fully they maximize the capacity of their human capital. And by the way, as a point of clarification, since human capital is a widely accepted technical term, it's people. It's flesh and blood. It's these young people who we saw on this film. Those that excel in this effort will reap the rewards and their people will be a source of great economic strength and value. Those that do not will languish in mediocrity or even worse, suffer serious social, financial, and national stability consequences. In the past decade, there are signs that some nations are making sense of this human capital issue. They're taking action. The number of nations that seem to be headed in the right direction is small, but it's growing. China and India are, among, are making good progress, but they still have many hurdles to overcome. Uh, I love speaking to people about what's happening in China because it appears that the game is over, that they've conquered the issue of human capital and domination in a lot of industries. Uh, I will tell you that I know that they have a massive, massive shortage of leaders in their country. They are short nearly 50,000 frontline managers. These are people who can lead workers. And if there's anything more important than a workforce, it's those who lead. And so this will be an Achilles heel for China if they don't resolve it. South Korea is, in my opinion, perhaps the best example of sustained economic and human capital growth. They're experiencing success in many of the industries of the future and are con continuing to maintain excellence in the more traditional sectors of their economy. They're doing both. South Korea has become a nation of human capital. They're developing the capability to focus their human capacities in any direction and for any purpose as markets and technologies shift. The major drivers of South Korea's success are nearly universal access to high quality education and the elevation of human capital development to the highest level of national importance. They again are a nation of human capital. And that isn't me speaking, that's the South Koreans speaking. 
Given this global context, can the Arab world build the capacity and abundant youth population by turning it into a powerful human capital asset, creating new industries and with new types of knowledge? How you answer this question will affect your nations, your companies, your education systems, and the young people throughout the Arab world. As we've witnessed throughout the past two days of the conference, there are incredible seeds of human capital transformation that are occurring throughout the region. But the clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. The Arab world must now make the leap from seeds of transformation to forests of transformation. This will require revolutionary and bold actions. Based upon my experiences, both past and present, I offer three pieces of advice to you. And by the way, I promise to be very blunt and direct and prescriptive today. You may not agree with my recommendations and my thoughts, but I, I will tell you what I believe to be the best lines of thinking. First, you can't build a 21st century human capital system with 20th and even 19th century thinking. On any given day, there are countless debates going on about how to fix the human capital problems that face most of the world. Most focus on how to improve existing processes and systems. I believe that this approach will never solve the problem. Further, I believe that many of the prevailing human capital theories, processes, and systems have been f fundamentally flawed for many years. I've been in the business of human capital for 36 years. I've never felt, never felt, that we've gotten it right. The ongoing debates and the solutions proposed are all too often based on insights and experience from a world that simply doesn't exist anymore. At some point over the past 15 years, the world entered